Okay, now for part C from question number 16, C12, June 2016, um, we are asked to find the area under this curve. I'm just, um, we find us, uh, sorry, we're, for, we're, for, we're supposed to find the exact area of this region called R, okay? So it says the line L meets the curve again at the point 20. So I know that this point here is 20, because that's a point 2. Okay, so the the curve hits the it's so the line touches the curve at P where it's a tangent and then it hits the curve again <clears throat> at the point two on the x-axis two zero. Use integration to find the exact area of the shaded region R. Now we know the coordinates of the point P are half and three eighths. We learned that from part A. Okay, so that means this point here is a half. Okay, and this point here is three eighths. Okay, those are the coordinates of P. Okay, half and three eighths. We've got to find the area of this shaded region, which is underneath the line, and it's above the x-axis and above the curve. All right. Now, integration tells us how to find the area under a curve, between the curve and the x-axis. So, here the area is above the curve. All right. So that's not going to help us uh, in a direct sense. But what we could do is we could do the following. We could say, okay, let's make a shape here. Let's make this triangle here. You've got this triangle, which is, you know, like from the point P down to 2 and across here. That triangle, we can find the area of that triangle because we know that the length of the base of this triangle is, is this length between a half and 2, which is 1 and a half, we could say 3 over 2. And we know the height of the triangle is 3 over 8. That's the y coordinate of P. So we can find the area of this triangle, and there is an area here under the curve which we don't actually need. This area here is an area that we don't need. If I take away that area from the area of the triangle, okay, we will have then found the area of the shaded region. And to find the area of this part of the curve that we do not need it is where the using the integration part comes in. Okay, we could also use integration to find the area under the line, but there's no need to because it, it makes a shape like a triangle which you know a formula for. Okay, so we need to now know Okay, so we know how to find the area of the triangle. That's no problem. It's a half times 3 over 2 times 3 over 8. That's no problem. Now we've got to find the area under the curve. So we need to know this point here where the curve touches the x-axis. Okay, so that's what we need to find out. Where does the curve touch the x-axis? Well, this is the equation of the curve. Okay, and we know that any line or curve touches the x-axis when y is equal to 0. And we can see when y is equal to 0, you have either, you have x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. So either x equals 0, that's one point here which we know, or x equals 1. If x minus 1 is 0, then x must be 1, which is the point we need, or x equals 2, which we already told anyway. So basically, if I integrate the curve between a half and 1, with respect to x, I'll find the area that I don't need, and I take that away from the triangle area. So let's first of all find the area of the triangle. Okay, the area of the triangle. Okay, this is 3 eighths, and this is 3 over 2. So the area is a half times the base times the height. That gives you 3 times 3, which is 9 over, that's 4 times 8, 32. 9 over 32 square units is the area of the triangle. Now we've got to find the area under the curve, something like this. Okay, that's between a half and 3 over 2, and 3 over 2. No, a half and 1, sorry, that's 1 here. Okay, a half and 1. Okay, so we've got to integrate the curve. Now, remember, we already worked out what this was. This was x squared, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. We've got it. Yeah, so we've got x cubed minus 2x squared plus, minus 3x squared, sorry, minus 3x squared plus 2x. minus 3x squared plus 2x 
with respect to x. That's what you get when you when you um, multiply that. You get x squared minus 3x plus 2. So you have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. That's right. We already did that in part a, actually. Now we're going to integrate. Okay. The, the, to integrate this, okay, we're going to have to integrate it between the limits a half and 1. And that will give us the area. Find the definite integral. So we need to integrate. So we add 1 to the power. Divide by the new power. It's opposite of differentiation. So you start with the power. You add 1 to the power, you get x cubed. 3x cubed, divide by the new power, 3. So 3x cubed over 3 gives you just x cubed. And you got plus and 2x. Add 1 to the power, you get x squared, divided by the new power, 2. 2x squared over 2 gives you just x squared. And then you've got to substitute a half and 1 into this. So you're going to have... Right, so you have 1 to the power 4 over 4. So 1 to the power 4 is 1. Minus 1, 1 cubed is 1, plus 1 squared, which is also 1. Okay, and you're going to take away from that, substituting a quarter to the Now, a quarter to the power 4 is 1 over 16. 1 over 16 times 4 is 1 over 64. Okay, you're going to have basically a half to the power 4, and you're going to have it's basically times a quarter, isn't it? So it's 1 over 16 over times 1 over 4, which is 1 over 64. And a half cubed is 1 over 8. And a half squared is 1 over 4. Okay? So you have a quarter minus, and then you've got all of this. Now, you can make them all over 64. 8, 8 is 64. So you have 8 over 64. And 16 times 4 is 64. So you have plus 16 over 64. So you have a quarter minus, this is 16 plus 1 is 17. 17 minus 8, which is 9. That's 9 over 64. Okay, so this gives you um, 16 over 16 over 64 minus 9 over 64, which gives you 7 over 64. So our answer, the area of R, is the area of our triangle minus the area under the curve, okay, which is equal to the area of that triangle, which was, what is it, 9 over 32 minus the area of the curve under the curve which is 7 over 64 well 9 over 32 is like 18 over 64 minus 7 over 64 which gives you 11 over 64 square units which is our answer okay all of that done without using a calculator although you can of course use a calculator right, so let's just see um, I want to just explain to you that there are some techniques you can use in C12 using this particular calculator or calculators like this. As long as they can't do algebraic manipulation, as long as it cannot take you from here to here algebraically, you're allowed to use such a calculator. So you can use a calculator and work out answers which will be um, numerical. So for example, I want to show you how this will integrate just to check out answers. 0 0.5, 1. Those are the limits, half and one. Okay, and then we can put in x squared, x cubed. So you've got your x here, and you've got your cubed. Don't forget, actually, to put the bracket first. Okay, then you continue. Minus 3x, minus 3x and squared, plus 2x. And close the bracket. With respect to x, that should give us our integral answer. Okay, what did we get when we integrated that? We got 9 over 64. Let's see if that gives us 9 over 64. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, that's the that 9 over 64 was for the uh, triangle. The area when we integrated gave us 7 over 64. Sorry, you're right. I'm right. So it's 7 over 64. It should give us 7 over 64, which it does. Okay. I was I was looking at the area of the triangle. Okay, 7 over 64. And we worked out the area of the triangle was 9 over 64. Okay. Um, so, 9 over 32, sorry. 
That was 9 over 32, the area of the triangle. 9 over 32. Okay, so then you do 9 over 32 minus 7 over 64. So you have 9 over 32 over 32 minus our answer. Oops. Minus our answer. And that gives you 11 over 64, which is what we got as our answer. So we can use calculators to check our answers to make sure that we've done everything correctly. Okay, it's very useful to check your numerical answers for your integration. It can't, of course, if it's able to get you the algebraic form, then it's not allowed. Okay, it's not allowed in the exam. So you have to only choose the ones that can do numerical um, integration and differentiation only. Okay, algebraic manipulation is not allowed. Only numerical answers can be given, and you can use that as a checking tool in your exam. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Okay, so um, that's the end of question number 16. Thank you for...